Hi, folks. Parental guidance. Oh, come on now. That ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. We got some, like, weather going on here. It's uh, raining its tail off. Anyway, it's about 10 to 11, Tuesday, January 14th. Uh, 41.3 degrees. According to that one, that one says 42, and this guy says 43, or in Celsius, 5. Okay, or 6. Here we are. Okay, this is a request video by... GM Lover 1. He bought himself a 200S and for 200 bucks, so he got himself a pretty good deal, but somebody hacked the wiring on him. And it unfortunately, a lot of bikes show up like that. So um, for all of us who want to play with these Honda three-wheelers, might as well get used to the idea and learn something about the wiring and, and just kind of get good at it. When the request came in, you know, I was trying to figure out how to answer his questions, and there's really no good way of, like, writing it down or, you know, even talking on a phone. You kind of got to show somebody what, what's going on. So let, let's do it. Um, I have an entire Honda <laughs> 200S wiring system here. I mean, I got the coil, the CDI, you know, the... Uh, the coil that goes beneath the flywheel, the um, pulser, I got everything here, right? And I guess the center of the universe for all of these things is the CDI unit. So that's always going to be the center of the universe. So let's start out with that. If you pull the plug off the CDI unit and you look down in it, you see there are six connectors. You see the way I drew the little smiley face on the plug right there and the uh, little dunce cap, this part on top. So we're looking at the CDI like this, and this is important. Don't, you know, pull the plug out and look into the plug because you're looking at things wrong. Pretend you're looking at the CDI. The CDI is the center of your universe. All right, now let's take a quick look. As you're looking at the CDI, the lower uh, right hand plug goes to green ground and if you look at the wire sticking out of the CDI right there see how it's nice and green isn't that nice so let's go counterclockwise from there the next wire on the CDI right goes to the um, AC power on the stator so it's black and red, AC power to CDI, comes from this data and goes there. So it goes from here, it's this wire right here, right? Black and red, plugs right in there, right? This goes over here, um, black and red, it's got crap on it, but trust, well, maybe you can see it from there, black and red. So this goes to there, goes to the wiring harness, and eventually comes out right there. Aren't you happy? By the way, the green, that goes for the wiring harness and comes out here. Kind of important that you bolt this to something. Or um, to the engine, to the frame. You gotta make sure that the engine's also hooked up well from a ground point of view. Or none of this works. So, we've already done two wires. You only got three more to go. This one, the center one. The one right by the dunce cap that's black and white goes up to the handlebars here and that's your kill switch when you hook black and white to ground to green touch it to the body the engine stops running you no longer have a spark so if anything um, if you're gonna make a mistake with the black and white wire make sure you float it next is black and yellow Black and yellow goes over to the ignition coil. This guy, and you see right there, black and yellow. This one here also has the green wire for ground going to it. So there you are. 
what goes to the ignition coil, black and yellow, green for ground, and the wire, um, spark plug wire, obviously has to come out of the ignition coil, so it has something to do, right? You want to be able to spark. Um, and the last wire that hooks to the CDI is blue and yellow, and that goes off to the Hall effect. The, the, I keep calling it a Hall effect. It's not a Hall effect. There's actually a coil in there. It's not a solid state device. It's a coil. It's just a, a bunch of wire wrapped around a, um, a ferrule, a, a piece of metal. Anyway, the Pulsar coil. The Pulsar coil, once again, blue and yellow. Go to the pulsar coil and the other one is green. So if you look over here, right, you got blue and yellow, and then you got green. Alright, so there you have it. Just I don't know where they hacked your wires, but if they hacked them here, this goes up to the kill switch and the light switch. What do you have here? These two guys here, right, which this one looks like it's blue and this one is kind of a red and white or red and yellow it's hard to tell these go to the headlight right high low and then um, there's got to be a ground somewhere where the headlight itself must have a wire hanging off of it that goes to ground so high and low for the headlight real tough right now let's look at the other wires going up this brown one comes all the way around back where's the back on this wiring harness and does the tail light. Yep, see? That does the tail light. And there's a green one also that does the tail light, right? That probably eventually works its way right to here. So, once again, we got bright lights, right? We got tail light. We got headlight. Let's call that low headlight. This yellow, that's the power. And the power comes from this guy. And if you look at it right here, right, you got power, and that goes into here. See the power, and you got ground. Right, that green wire there is ground. And last but not least, you got that black and white, right, right there. And that does the kill switch. So I think I've hit every single wire. Let me try to. Well, here, let's start at the center of the universe. And you can kind of see, and then you got black and yellow, green for ground on top. You got black and red, black and white, black and yellow. See the black and yellow goes to the ignition coil. You can see the blue and yellow go to the pulsar. You can see the green goes to ground. That center one, right above the smile, goes to nothing. It's not connected. Nothing. Right, you look at the back of the plug here. You can see that hole in the center. It's connected to nothing, and I mean that literally nothing. Okay, across the top, the first one goes off to the stator, black and red. The middle one goes to the kill switch, and then we're back to black and yellow going to the ignition coil. Um very important make sure this is hooked to ground very very important let's say you're just screwing around and oh I only want to do the ignition so I'm going to plug into this you can kind of get away with that but make sure that your engine is grounded I actually had to run an extra ground here see how I'm missing the top mount um, and then looking this over I realized that I, I kind of had a shabby system so I actually hooked the ground to the case, ran it, and hooked it up to the coil. And you notice the wiring harness here also has a ground hooked up. So ground is very important. If you have a weak ground, you're screwed. Trust me. Listen to me. Hear me. You're screwed. Make sure your grounds are hooked up. And when I'm troubleshooting, a lot of times I'll actually unplug. Like that's the, uh, I think that's the black and white. I'll, I'll actually unplug that to make sure that I, I don't have a, a short or something with my kill switch that's screwing me up. Um, every once in a while, somebody will break into these kill switches and do real interesting things. So if I'm troubleshooting, normally the first thing I do, check the grounds, 
The second thing I do is di disconnect the kill switch. I make sure that um, that line is floating. Um, GM lover, love GM lover one. The good news for you is these round plug CDIs actually seem to produce a hotter spark. They actually seem to work better than the square guys. These guys. Um, I don't know why they just seem to be a little hotter. Um, that's on in the world of plus. In the world of minus, should it go bad on you? Should your CDI go bad? Um, you need to rewire your harness and you could just throw one of these in. Um, I'm not exactly positive. I, I'd have to go upstairs and uh, dig up the wiring diagram. Um, if it became necessary, I can decode, um, you know, basically set you up so that your square box is no good and we'll figure out how to wire this thing in if, if you run into that trouble. It's not all that hard. I mean, you would just set it up like this and figure out where each thing goes to. So, I hope that helps. Um, I hope that gets you moving in the right diagram. Um, I've been meaning to kind of draw this out anyway for my own good. And it seems that every time I go through one of these wire harnesses, I walk away with a little bit more knowledge. Um, so, that, believe it or not, this actually helps me quite a bit um, because as you as you do it, as you study it, you begin to memorize things and remember things, and y you know you're just quicker. As as I'm beating through there, right? If I'm troubleshooting that guy or whatever, I I'll I'll just get there so much faster. My goal with these bikes is um, certain parts you can't get anymore. Once again, unless you buy these as uh, new old stock or used, um, these, these aren't coming from Honda anymore. At least I don't think so. That's what I've heard. So, and even if you could get that from Honda, you're not going to get it for like $9 like this one cost, right? So if you can buy one of these $9 ones, even if you have to change your wire harness and keep a spare floating around, put it in a plastic bag, throw it in your air filter box um, just in case it dies out on the trail or whatever. Um, you, you know, the trick is to keep these things alive. One of the reasons why I'm coming up with this um, ignition box, and by the way, I have the box it's going into and the battery holder and some switches and all that crap on order. Hopefully it gets to me over the next few days. Um, the reason why I'm doing that once again is a way of troubleshooting these things quicker and coming up with a, an ignition system should the parts get harder and harder to find. You know, we want to keep these uh, three-wheeled guys going as long as possible. Um, obviously, they don't make them anymore. They haven't made them. We, you couldn't get them after 86 in this country, in the United States. I don't know if in Canada they ran them out to 87, maybe. I'm not positive. I'm, I'm just going through some of the stuff I see on, on the Internet. Um, occasionally, there is an 87 one that says 87 on the on the sticker that somebody will throw on eBay or Craigslist and I'm not quite sure how they manage that I'm I'm pretty sure that if it, it says it was manufactured after 86 it wasn't allowed in this country I don't know maybe they snuck it in from Canada or Mexico or maybe it was hiding in some dealership somewhere all right folks I'm gonna let you go we got about 14 minutes in on this Folks, live, love, and have a great time. We'll catch you on the next episode of The Horde. Until then, stay warm, stay dry, and stay busy. You know, no matter what you're doing, you you, you got to push. You got to keep it going. You know, you want to get stuff done. You know, very easy to watch TV. There's millions of people who do that, you know, 12, 14 hours a day. And then they, the, uh, the remaining hours, they uh, eat and sleep. Um, but... If you're watching my videos and kind of doing some of this stuff, hopefully uh, hopefully you also get out and you play, or you do some research, you, you keep moving. You, you know, guys, there's a lot of toys out there in this world. you got to get out there and play with them, right? What's the use of them existing if we're not going to play with them? 
All right, folks, take care. Thanks for watching, commenting, subscribing. We'll see you all soon.